Among the most legendary Simpsons episodes are the Halloween specials, otherwise known as Treehouse of Horror. Because of their format, they allow the directors and writers to take the characters any place they wish and include the imagery they cannot in a regular episode. These segments have ranged from parodies to experimental, and even though horror is a frequent theme, they've also dabbled in science fiction stories. They provide some of the most creative moments in the history of this long-running series, and with Halloween just around the corner, it's naturally a fitting time to name my favorite Trias Horror segments, starting with Don't Have a Cow, Mankind. There are two zombie-related segments I could have chosen for this countdown, and the first one, Dal Z for Zombies, is a great one with a number of funny moments. However, I really like how this segment from Trials 420 depicts the zombie apocalypse. As opposed to a magical spell, this one goes for Tainted Krusty Burgers as the main cause, and the segment provides the appropriate level of peril and humor as the Simpsons try to escape the zombies that have taken over Springfield. There's a genuine love for zombie movies in this segment, with the script including the hallmarks as well as its own touches. It finds funny uses for the characters, like Krusty and Apu, as they all react to this, and there are some great lines and plot points throughout. This was the first Trias Horror episode to be made in high definition, and you can see the directors and animators taking advantage of that. It's just a great zombie story that packs a lot of solid ideas into its runtime. Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace, a parody of Nightmare on Elm Street, the idea of having groundskeeper Willie as Freddy Krueger is an inspired one, and writer Steve Tompkins comes up with a lot of fitting dream scenarios for the children to find themselves in. My personal favorite is Bart's text every inspired dream which opens the segment, with the animators even replicating that style within the Simpsons universe. The segment nicely highlights the infinite possibilities of Trias of Horror as the characters are contorted in all sorts of imaginative ways, and it takes advantage of the dreamlike logic going on here. Although through it all, Willie's personality still remains as he himself gets into comical situations that frustrate him. He just happens to be trying to murder children in their sleep in this scenario. The segment is also a good example of the Simpson children using their cunning to defeat an enemy and coming up with clever solutions. Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace works as a humorous retelling of Wes Craven's popular horror movie while making it fit within the Simpsons world. The Day the Earth Looks Stupid Placing Springfield in a late 30s setting and having them react to Orson Welles' infamous War of the Worlds radio broadcast allows for a very funny segment. In addition to having fun with the time period, this segment does a great job of showcasing the paranoia of the average Springfield resident who would definitely be fooled by that radio show, especially Homer. It also becomes a solid Boy Who Cried Wolf type story when Kang and Kodos come in and do the actual invasion. One of the highlights of the segment is the use of Wells, which gives Maurice LaMarche another opportunity to use his famous impression of the legendary filmmaker. There are some great jokes related to his appearance, and it becomes a fun parody of Wells in addition to being a great alien invasion segment in its own right, with a solid use of those tentacle creatures. Nightmare Cafeteria Trias 4 is known for having the most disturbing moments on The Simpsons, and the segment is certainly a squeamish one of its story of the school staff eating the students, but still done to hilarious effect. The casualness with which Principal Skinner and the other teachers treat their sudden cannibalism is very funny, and they make very little attempt to even hide what they're doing. The part where Skinner is wearing lederhosen all of a sudden is a great and funny example of this. The segment as well, in building the fear that suddenly sets among the children, and this is probably the most scared they've ever been of them, as opposed to laughing their usual incompetence and inability to control them. The staff becomes legitimately threatening here, with the animation team and director Jim Reardon doing a lot with the lighting as well. Although the most gruesome part of the segment actually comes at the end, when Bart wakes from his nightmare and everyone turns inside out. Ick. Nightmare Cafeteria was actually the first thing David X. Cohen would write for The Simpsons, before eventually teaming up with Matt Groening to help create Futurama, and it definitely showed his skill at writing dark humor. Stop the World, I Wanna Goof Off Inspired by Twilight Zone episode, Bart and Milhouse get a magical stopwatch that allows them to pause time, and naturally use it for their own mischievous deeds. There are some hilarious gags, particularly what they do with Homer and his beloved donuts, and we even see a rare example of Mayor Quimby doing something actually smart in response to their antics. The story does take some solid turns, and the situation causes Bart and Milhouse to evolve. Well, at least a little bit. Writer John Swartzwelder takes full advantage of the premise, and in showing the differences between both of them as they figure out the best use of this stopwatch and see the eventual consequences. There is not a false note in this segment, finding the proper amount of humor out of this and understanding exactly what two troublesome youngsters would do if they got a stopwatch with these abilities. The Terror of Tiny Toon the itchy and scratchy portions of The Simpsons allow the artists to do their own violent version of Tom and Jerry, and so putting Bart and Lisa into one of their cartoons provides a highly enjoyable flip of the switch. It played into the entire idea of us laughing at the misfortunes of cartoon characters and how they might feel about it, and it becomes a humorous chase through a cartoon world. 
even though The Simpsons are also cartoon, so it's still cartoon on cartoon violence. Nonetheless, there are plenty of strong gags throughout the segment with Itchy and Scratchy proving more than formidable foes for The Simpsons children. A highlight from the segment comes from a live action appearance by Regis Philbin and Kathy Lee Gifford. They are only on screen for about 15 seconds, but their reaction to these cartoon characters showing up is just great. The segment goes to some delightfully funny places and is a clever bit of animated mayhem. The Raven. This was quite a daring choice for segment in the first Trias Poor, as it adapted Edgar Allan Poe's classic poem by using several of verses, albeit with Homer Bart. As perfectly narrated by the late James Earl Jones, it captures the proper mood, and these characters are able to fit into this version as Homer reacts with anger and fear to the raven bothering him. It also reflects the relationship Bart and Homer have in the regular episodes, as he continually pesters his father. And the one time it utilizes Eat My Shorts instead of the raven's signature line, Nevermore, is exceptionally well-timed. Credit especially goes to the segment's director, David Silverman, for his handling of the material, and writer Sam Simon for his adaptation. It's interesting that this has now become, for many, the definitive take on the poem, and it's understandable why. Matt Groening was worried the segment would come across as pretentious. However, it's anything but, and instead ended up one of the most artistic things The Simpsons ever did. Homer Cubed. This is another highly experimental segment and an extremely creative way to see if The Simpsons could work in a three-dimensional computer-generated environment. It succeeded wonderfully with its funny plotline of Homer finding himself in this other dimension while trying to hide from Patty and Selma. There's some humor spits where he interacts with his family and other Springfieldians trying to figure out what's going on, with a bit about Tron being probably the funniest. Inside the 3D world is a technical marvel, and the artist did an excellent job of translating Homer and Bart to computer animation. The animation holds up really well, and the characters are able to retain their cartooniness despite the limitations of the era. I also find myself looking at the background a lot of the time and admiring the details. Tim Johnson, who would later go on to direct Ants and Over the Hedge, was responsible for these portions, and he and his team deserve to be commended for their work here. The ending of the segment with Homer in the live-action world was also a great way to conclude the story. There will be later Trias Poor segments done in computer animation, and it's interesting to see how the technology has evolved in those, but this first attempt remains the most special. Time and Punishment, an excellent take on the butterfly effect in time travel, this segment comes up with a lot of clever alternate universes, all the cause of Homer ending up in the prehistoric era. There are plenty of funny ideas featured throughout, including a 1984-inspired universe where Ned Flanders is in charge. There's also a funny and frustrating moment where Homer leaves too early from a universe he would have absolutely loved, but oh well. The visual gags of full of creativity and the nods to the likes of Peabody and Sherman are delightfully woven in. Although, like many people, I don't understand Homer's line about being the first non-Brazilian to travel through time. Even Matt Groening has expressed his confusion in this line, which is just kind of random. But the oddness of that line only makes it that much more fascinating and feels right at home with the oddball nature of the segment. I also like how Homer genuinely tries to set things right, even though he frequently messes up, as he immediately recognizes the gravity of what he's done. Meanwhile, my favorite joke involves what Homer does with some sausages. Time and Punishment becomes a worthwhile and very funny time travel story and a great use of Homer. Now, before I reveal my number one favorite Treehouse Poor segment, I thought it'd be fun to invite a few people to share their own pick and explain why. Hey, Mr. Code, how's it going? Thanks for having me here. I'm Jim Gisriel, and uh, my number one uh, favorite segment from any Treehouse of Horror is actually from the very first Treehouse of Horror or the Simpsons Halloween special. Uh, it would actually be The Raven. Um, I grew up, I think I watched this when it premiered, to be honest with you, this episode. Um, I grew up in Baltimore, so uh, Edgar Allan Poe is kind of a lot bigger there uh, because he died there and stuff. I don't know. They're into it. But um, they, or I mean the Ravens, it's a football team based on this poem too, and so there you go. But they, <laughs> they uh, I, I think what I always liked about this in particularly this year, because of James Earl Jones recently passed away, um, his amazing reading of Edgar Allan Poe's poem, um, how it both was cartoony and silly, but also didn't skimp on the poem at all, to my understanding, uh, really presented like this classical gothic horror poem within the Simpsons style, and both James Earl Jones's reading of it works, but also like having Lisa and Maggie, you know, bump the kind of seraphin on his head and having Bart be the raven and saying like never more never more and like all those things that like really hit me as a kid and it's like kind of like always been a real favorite segment of mine and it's uh you know it's there's other great animated uh versions of Edgar Allan Poe's story certainly I think UPA did one but this is one that's always really stuck with me mostly because it actually got me to pay attention to Edgar Allan Poe when I was very young and it always kind of struck me as like this special interesting thing they did and i don't think they've done any other gothic poems in treehouse of horror 
but this one definitely stayed with me and i think it's because of uh, james earl jones was reading but also seeing that funny bart raven as well favorite simpsons stress horse segment um i hope this one was not talked about because i can't say redundancy I'm going to go with Homer Cubed, or Homer to the Third Power from Trios of Horror 6. That one always stood with me for some reason. I feel the first 15 still hold up in their own uh, way. I do like the classics, like The Shinning, and The Raven, and of course, uh, anything with King Codes is great. But there's just something about that segment that always stood with me. Because I like it when The Simpsons do something out of the norm and different. Anything that they wouldn't do within the confines of the show, and just seeing... A computerized Homer is something that always fascinated me. There's something about the animation that just still looks great to this day. I don't know if it's the rendering or how it was done. You have animation being done by Pacific Data Images, aka PDI, who would later do stuff for DreamWorks like Shrek and Ants. And to see them beat Pixar to the punch just by one month, and, and to see that before everyone just dug into the whole digital CGI animation craze is just so unique. Computer animation was very primitive back then, um, so to see that at just the forefront before it just went this far is so, so fascinating. Uh, it's still funny, it's still fresh, and the effects, they, they just look great. They still look great to this day, even standard definition. Hey everyone, Kit from Channel KRT here, here to talk about The Simpsons! That's obscure media, right? Anyway, it's a tough pick for my favorite Trios of Horror segment, but if I must pick... I gotta go with Nightmare Cafeteria. It's hilarious and has some of my favorite Simpsons lines ever. You look them straight in the eye and say, Don't eat me! In fact, you might even say we ate Ooder and he's in our stomachs right now. Well, something always comes along to save the Simpsons children. On top of that, though, it genuinely scared the shit out of me, especially with the lead-in into the fog that turns people inside out. Not to mention I love the Willy running gag coming full circle throughout this episode. It's a perfect blend of horror and comedy, and I can't recommend it enough. And now back to being tortured by a purple dinosaur. Maybe I should have talked about Homer's toaster. Better lead-in. Hello all you happy people, I'm Animated Antic, and I'm here today to talk about what I consider my personal favorite Treehouse of Horror segment. I always find Treehouse of Horror a lot of fun to revisit on Halloween, because much like the regular episodes of The Simpsons, there's so much rewatchability in these episodes with their big laughs and good eeriness. To me, it's the same kind of vibe you get when you're huddled up in blankets on Halloween with your friends, chowing on candy, listening to them to tell silly ghost stories while they hold a flashlight to their face. And that's basically the overall impression since the beginning of this anthology series, as we see Bart, Lisa, and Maggie tell stories in the treehouse on Halloween night. There's plenty of good segments within the anthology, including the numerous film parodies, but... I always find myself attached more to the original stories rather than the full-on parodies, as I think they sometimes have the bigger laughs. And my personal favorite has always been The Thing and I from Treehouse of Horror 7. To me, this segment shows Treehouse of Horror at its best. It keeps things nice and simple, while also being very spooky, very funny, and very hard to forget. It follows Bart and Lisa after they hear strange noises from the attic and seemingly discover a monster. They are then told by Homer, Marge, and Dr. Hibbert that the creature is in fact Bart's evil twin Hugo, whom was conjoined with Bart at birth, and separated and forced to live in the attic eating fish heads due to him being so evil and deranged. From there, Bart eventually meets his long-lost twin brother, who reveals his plan to sew himself onto Bart so they can be back together again. And from there, spookiness and hilarity ensues. To me, the reason why this works is because I think it's the perfect kind of spooky story. One that has some chills in it, as well as having a little bit of silliness that doesn't make it plunge into total horror, while also taking pieces from other famous stories to create something new. There's something about Bart having an evil twin that's just a twisted idea, but also gut-punchingly hilarious, and the segment takes full advantage of it. There's plenty of good laughs in here, the gag involving Hugo looking into a quote-unquote mirror is comedy gold, as well as a terrific twist ending that really sticks the landing. Not to mention, the other highlight is Nancy Cartwright. She's great as Bart, as usual, but she is also really great as Hugo, giving him a mad and somewhat unstable voice, though with a slight twist, which, again, benefits the ending much more. You feel bad for him, but at the same time, you realize that this character is just not all that right in the head. It's just an overall great segment. Hilarious, twisted, spooky, and perfect for Halloween. And one that I can easily call my personal favorite. So with that... Wait...
You're here, aren't you? Yes, Antic. I never left you. <laughs> what do you want from me? You'll see. After the surgery. Wait. <laughs> Wait! And now my number one personal favorite Trios Horror segment is The Shitting. A parody of Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of Stephen King's The Shining, this segment managed to pack the entire story into its runtime while also providing one very funny joke after another. Homer's Jack Torrance-like descent into madness is hilariously portrayed, and the twists on the Kubrick film are exceptionally well implemented, from the famous typewriter scene to Homer trying out different catchphrases as he breaks down hotel doors. However, even if you've never seen The Shining, the jokes still deliver, whether it's the opening joke of Homer forgetting important things after leaving the house, or various monsters dragging Homer out of the freezer to murder his family. And then there's the classic bit, where we find out no TV and no beer make Homer go crazy. The animators especially give Homer plenty of fantastic facial expressions, and it all adds up to a segment with a lot to enjoy. Interesting enough, this and two other segments on this list came from Trials of Horror 5, so the Simpsons crew certainly delivered with that entire episode. This year even marks the 30th anniversary of that episode, so I guess it's fitting I chose now to do this countdown. Anyway, let me know your favorite Trials of Horror segments in the comments, and have a happy Halloween!